Hello, today I'm going to be talking about the electric eel wheel yarn counter and specifically I'll be focusing on the software because I believe this one has the final version of the software. So I fixed some bugs, I've added a few new features and I've changed around the menus a little bit. So I think this is the final version. I will be sending it to the factories to have them start their verification in a few weeks. So during that time I'll continue looking for additional bugs. And if people have any uh, last minute feature requests, uh, definitely uh, make suggestions because we're kind of running out of time for those to be submitted and being able to make it into the first version of the software. But before we get into all of that, I want to show you quickly one of the ways that I measure the accuracy of the yarn counter because I think you might find that interesting. Now I'll show you one of the ways I've been measuring the accuracy of the yarn counter. So this string here has a little knot here and then there's a black mark over in that direction that uh, is at exactly 10 yards. So I'm just going to pull this string through and when the black mark gets to exactly here it should be at 10 meters. I'll hit reset and let's go. So this string does have some stretch to it. I picked it because it doesn't stretch much, but over the 10 yards, I still see about uh, maybe a foot or so. So that would be 0.3 yards of uh, stretch. So here comes the black mark and we'll see how far it gets. So 10.1 meters or yards. So 10.1 yards when it's supposed to be 10 yards sounds like there's a 1% error. And I guess you could say that, but most likely in this case, it's just that I stretched the string a little bit more when I was measuring it with the tape measure and a little bit less when it was going through the yarn counter. So if you really want to get rid of that last few percent of error, you really need to set up a tensioning system for this. And that's Something I'll probably do some videos about in the future, but from what I've been told, most people are just looking to get within a few percent of the actual length of your yarn. So now I'll go through the different menus on this version of the software for the electric eel wheel yarn counter. So this is the main menu. This is what it starts at. As the disc spins, it counts the distance and it can count in either yards or meters. I'll show you in a future menu how you change that. If you want to get the distance back to zero, you hit the reset button and that's pretty much all there is to this menu. So if you hit the menu button, we go to this screen where you can check, pick between meters and yards and you hit menu again. And this is where you can adjust the target length. So if I hold the button here, it takes me to the next position. So let's do that twice and we'll take this down to zero. And then we'll go back. So now it's at zero. If it's at zero yards, it never beeps. So if you don't want it to ever beep, you can set it to zero or just some really high value that you'll never get to. But now it should beep when it gets to three yards. and now, just to sort of demonstrate this, I'll skip through the rest of the menus for now, but, um, oh, I wanted to switch this to yard or meters just so you can see that it does count in meters as well. Okay, so now we're still going to beep when it gets to three meters. Okay, we're almost there. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show you with those. Um, I guess one other thing I'll show you that's kind of nice is if you have it set to say meters and you actually want it to, to set to yards, you can switch it to yards even after you started counting. And if you go back, it's actually going to switch uh, this number. So uh, this is at 3.4. I actually forget what it was when it was at meters, but it should be um, a little bit less. So yeah, so it went from 3.1 3 meters is 3.4 yards. Um, people can check my conversions, I guess, there, but I'm pretty sure that's accurate. I've, I've double-checked this stuff quite a few times now. Let's keep going through the menus. Uh, this beep, this just controls whether it beeps when you're pressing keys. So now you can see I can go through the menus and 
there's no beeping. So if you don't want any noise from it, you can turn that off. But I kind of like it. It just kind of gives you a nice confirmation that a button was pressed and it wasn't double pressed and things like that. So I'm going to turn it back on for the rest of this. So YARN uh, WPI, that stands for wraps per inch. And what this does is this adjusts the length of the yard slightly based on the diameter of the yard. I explain how that works in the Kickstarter video, but I'll ship with a card like this. This isn't the exact one that I'll be shipping. This is one I made for the electric eel wheel, spinning wheels, but um, it's something that'll look pretty similar to this. And this lets you just sort of put your yarn in front of it and it'll tell you, you know, whether it's 40 or 20 WPI. So it'll be easy to measure your yarn and you can just adjust this um, to be more accurate. Since the Kickstarter, I did decide to go a little bit larger yarn, even bulkier than eight WPI. So I, I added a six WPI setting uh, to this menu. Let's see. Next up is the last standard menu. Uh, this tells you the battery voltage. And if you look up your batteries, uh, online, you'll see, you know, for rechargeable, there's a different voltage than for non-rechargeable. So this will just help you know if your batteries are getting low. So it looks like the voltage for my current batteries, which are the ones I've been using for all of my testing, are just be between 1.4 and 1.5 because it's kind of switching back between those. Uh, it also lists the software version, and that's just in case I lit release different versions. This will help people easily see what version they have and uh, help me if you have a problem. I can say, uh, check your version and uh, we'll see if there's uh, ever, you know, any issues that you're having that might be related to an older version or not. I have no intention of releasing updated versions, but it could happen. So I'm just sort of putting it there uh, to be safe. And that's sort of the end of the standard menus. There is a calibration menu that I'll talk about now. I don't expect people ever change it, but I didn't want people changing it by accident. Uh, so I took it out of the standard menus. And now what I've done is I've just removed the back cover because what I have to do to get into this special menu, this calibration menu, is I have to sort of take out the battery and then before I reinsert it, I have to hold down the power button while I reinsert the battery. And it takes me into this calibration menu. And I'll tell you what this does. So uh, again, you should never have to change this. But uh, this first number is the current measurement from the disk value. So this disk, if we look at the back of this disk, part of it's black and part of it's white. And as it's rotating, there's a little light sensor that detects that change. And you can see that, um, like right now, we're the the sensor is sort of down here, so it's sensing the white region of the disc, and it's you know seeing it fluctuates a little bit, but you know it's a little under 700. And then if I rotate a little bit and it changes, now it's sensing the black region of the disc. And it's got a value up around, you know, 870 or something. It fluctuates a little bit. But then these other two values are, this is a, the first one is the lower threshold. And the upper one is the upper threshold. And basically, whenever a value is determined below that, we have, you know, one color of the disc and whatever a color above this high threshold, we have the other color of the disc. So as we're rotating, it's going and and there's a there's a bunch of room in the middle in case you're right on the line. I don't think I can. Let's see if we can get it. You can you can get it to change a little bit right next on. So here's a line. And if I can kind of get it right in between there. Well, where did it go? Oh, here. Okay. So, I mean, it's really hard. I've, I've spent a lot of time and I can't really get it. But in theory, you could have a problem where you get sort of this gray measurement in between. Oh, there was one, like there was an 865. So that one wouldn't be counted. But as long as you're measuring it in one direction, uh, 
the point of this is it it's sort of how I use my algorithm. I guess I could explain it in better detail if anybody's really interested, but I suspect you're not, so I'm just going to cut it off here. But anyways, this is how it measures. You can adjust it, and if you adjust it incorrectly here, I'll, I'll go set it incorrectly. So now, watch what happens if we... Okay, so in order to get out of this mode, you just hit the, the menu button. And until you take out the batteries and hold the power button you won't end up in the calibration mode. So again, I never expect people to really go into this mode, but um, if you do uh, and you mess something up, here, I'll show you. So I've, I've set it so that here now, look, it's just like, it's just counting basically as fast as it can. Uh, so, oops, I, I've messed up the calibration. However, you know, the, the good thing is it's easy to fix. All I do is I take out a battery, put it back in, and now we're reset back. The calibration, the menus, uh, everything resets when you take out the battery, so it's back to working normally again. And I think that's all I had to show you about the menus. Thanks for watching.